Hello, today I want to show you how easy it is nowadays to build your custom chatbot with OpenAI, ChatGPT and integrate it with your custom logic, it can be whatever you want. For purposes of this video I will use OpenAI DALI to draw some images. So our ChatGPT will be able to draw images and it will set the prompt by itself. Okay, so I will do demo, I will show the code and I will show how to deploy it. So either, even if you don't know enough about we are talking, if you just follow the steps, you will be able to reproduce it. I will show uh, where to download the code. My GitHub repo will be in the description, how to obtain all the needed API keys and stuff. Okay, let's start. So here on the right, there is a chat message box. And uh, well, let's start with something simple. Hey, where am I? So usually ChatGPT doesn't know that, but because we integrated some function calling, it can call our custom functions. So you can see it requested to call a function. Here is the name, get current location, and the get current location function returned Singapore. And we got the answer. You are currently in Singapore. Awesome. Okay, so it is all possible with a new uh, functionality, function calling. You can read about it on OpenAI blog. And um, I want to say that you have to, at the moment of writing this video, to specify what models you are about to call. It should be either GPT 3.5 Turbo 0613, which is 13th of June. Is the same thing but for JetGPT4 if you have access to it. Okay, I will explain what is called in this, what they are talking about in this uh, documentation. Basically, you first specify what functions are in your system and then um, you can call it. Instead of returning you content of the answer straight away, it will return function call object and uh, basically here we display it. Okay, let's uh, ask it for something more complicated, but I should warn you, when I record in this video, uh, sometimes it just don't work. Sometimes it seems like this is a new functionality, maybe it's still in beta-ish, um, but it's, uh, well, not very stable. I think they will work on it, just sometimes it doesn't work at all, okay? Okay, that was uh, current location. What is time in my location? That will call another function. And here you can see calling function get current date time 4.17 p.m. June 25th, which is correct. Okay, and now you can see it knows location, it knows time. Let's ask it to draw something with OpenAI. But because it's ChatGPT, it will understand from context that we are going, uh, that we wanted to draw something and it knows, okay, there is a drawing function. So, draw a Batman, not a, eh, it's a Batman. Draw Batman in my locations signature. See, oh my, my English. Signature place. Okay, so it knows already my location. It knows the time, but it doesn't need the time here. So it will just directly call drawing, drawing function. Here on the bottom, I can see the logs and it just called uh, Batman in Singapore signature place. The function outputted URL to the picture and then it formatted it. I'm using Markdown here and I display it with <clears throat> Markdown to HTML uh, package for NPM. I'll show you how it is done. And uh, well, it is something that looks like a Batman differently and something that looks like a city. Uh, sometimes it draws better Batman and in some place like Maria Bay Sands, a signature hotel in Singapore, but well, we get what we get. 
Okay, at least this time it worked. So here you can see we called functions one by one, but also it can call multiple functions at once. So let's refresh page, it will lose context. And I'll ask him draw Batman in my location signature place and time. So it should call all three functions. Well, fingers crossed it should work. I can see logs, I can see time and date and location. He's got, he got the URL. Hopefully this it will, blow, it will display all of them. So I can see here it called all three functions one by one in as a chain. Uh, and also we got the answer, but this time it probably cut off part of URL. So it is not valid anymore, but if we click on it here, oh, nice. It is Maria by sense hotel and the Batman and, um, kind of better Batman than last time. Well, it's not me journey API, uh, not me journey. Me journey doesn't have API yet. Hope they will release some of it soon. And, uh, these pictures will be better, but this is just for demo. You can integrate whatever you want, like home automation or your business, uh, features or it's only limited by your imagination. So how to do that? First of all, you need to create account on openai.com and create API key. Uh, let me make this window bigger. In the sidebar, you will see API keys. You will get to this page. I have one key. You won't have any in the beginning. So just click create new secret key, give it a name. It can be anything and just copy the value, this value. Okay. Then let me move myself somewhere. Here in the readme, you'll see instruction where to put the key. Right now it's .n file that you'll need to create. You just add this line, open AI, API key equals and your value. And that's it. Also, you need to install dependencies and run it locally. We'll get to deploy step later. You don't need to do anything now, uh, but keep in mind for deploy, you'll need AWS account uh, API keys and, uh, configured CLI, but we'll cover that. Okay. Awesome. So let me show you how it works. First, let's see what is the structure of our project. So this is a Svelte kit application. So you will recognize, uh, typical stuff for Svelte which is roads folder. We have only one page. So here you can see plus page .svelte, which is a page that displays chat displays, displays prompt input that sits here on the bottom and uh, some loading animation, some error animation, and also it iterates for each images in our current chat and displays them. So chat message component itself is sitting in the lib client components. There are a couple of helpful components. Chat message is one of them. And you can see depending on the role of the user in the message, it can be, well, is there a user, is there assistant that is answering and has some message content? Is there a system that is uh, calling some function or it can be a function that displayed here. So this is simple HTML. You can toggle some stuff to see details. You can delete uh, messages like, let's say you realized, oh, it was something wrong with my last message or it didn't answer, but I want to proceed with this conversation. Or I want just to roll back in time and answer a different question. So delete is sometimes useful. Okay. So I won't deep to dive into HTML part of Svelte kit. Um, if you want to learn more about Svelte kit, check out our, my other videos. Um, 
but it's well it's just HTML and a little bit of JavaScript to make it a bit interactive but as you can see there are not much functionality uh, okay so the page itself has one important function add message it trims the input it uses Zod to fill uh, all the fields that are necessary for uh, the message um, except our content and also it puts so we have object chat with the messages array it puts a new message in the array and sends it to our store so chats here is a store imported from add stores and you can see it here client stores folder and here is simple logic it's a custom store you can subscribe to it you can get status of operation like well right now it's only one operation to add a message but in future i plan to expand it to create new chats delete chats etc update just puts new message into the chat and message is actually sends it to the server using some API endpoint. You can see it here. This request helper function uses fetch API and sends post to slash API slash chats. And it sends just the whole chat, just like as it is with new message inside. Then it waits for result. And uh, if everything is successful, it updates the local storage sorry storage store store updates the UI and you see the answer basically this is all about front-end that you need to know okay now let's go and find this endpoint and how it looks like so that was all about client folders now let's go to roads API chats server TS so this function is quite small it receives payload you sent it it parses and expects it to be chat schema from Zod. Um, by the way, let me show you. If you are not familiar with Zod, it's a validation library. It allows you to define a schema for objects. Like here, I have chat schema. Chat should have ID, title, messages, array, created, add, updated, add fields. And each field has its own type, limitation, how long it can be like messages is an array of message schema and uh, message has id duration was it function argument called was it message flagged like inappropriate etc um, so then you call save parse on the schema and zod either returns you success either returns you error with error details what was not valid so that's all about that okay um, then if any message was flagged before endpoint will reject any further request to the OpenAI API because hey you should remove your flagged message with this cross button and uh, start again with something appropriate okay then actually the only important function that this important endpoint of the law calls is sage function well hence the name of the project right now i imitated that there is authentication and this is user id in the future it will be we use sage function to get new array of messages save it to the chat and then return to the front end okay so that was a simple part relatively simple how front-end works, how back-end works. Now let's dive a little bit more into this OpenAI integration with callable function. Um, okay, this will be a little bit more complicated, I warned you, but I will try to explain everything as best as I can. Um, cool, okay, so this is lib server sage file. And here you can see all the function that make 
these uh, calls to OpenAI API possible. They do uh, this recursive calls. Uh, for example, when OpenAI needs to call multiple of your functions as a chain, like first it calls location, then date time, then drawing. This is all implemented here. Cool. Okay. Uh, one by one, Sage uh, receives an array of messages. It first checks if uh, the latest message is appropriate. If it is not, then it will return updated array of messages with one of them flagged. Uh, this function is here. It also uses OpenAI API. They have special moderation endpoint. But let's not dive too deep into it. Just don't send it some weird stuff that is inappropriate and you will be safe. Second step is to configure persona. Well, I call it persona. Not sure if it's called correctly. Uh, what actually is done is we add additional system uh, system message it goes in the beginning we do not draw it in the ui but it is there you know uh, here i just say it hey all your answers you format as markdown because markdown is what we can use to style uh, plain text as html let me give you an example while i'm talking let us it to uh, generate an article about jazz classes okay while it is doing that we are continuable we are proceeding yes okay that was persona so just just to prepend array of messages with system message here uh, later on i plan to add more perso personas like some personas are uh, friendly, some personas are uh, answering very short, as short as possible, and some of them are like focused on helping you with marketing or something like that. Okay, oh, here we got the answer that is formatted with markdown. You can see it has titles, it has code blocks, code is highlighted. So everything of this is possible if we use markdown. That's why I use that persona. Okay, cool. We covered personas. Last step of the Sage function is create chat completion, which takes messages and functions. Okay, so we finally got into functions. Let's see where functions come from. So they are imported from functions file, which is sitting nearby here. And we have three functions actually I forgot to call you a weather function but the current location function returns Singapore always you can uh, implement it and use some API or check IP address and figure out lo location of the user uh, but right now for simplicity of this video I just hard-coded it as Singapore second current daytime uses just new date to string again if you deploy it to the server it will be executed on the server side and it won't be the uh, daytime of the user it will be daytime of the server so keep it in mind also for each function i add additional fields yes you can actually add extra fields to, to the function uh, here description description for another one get weather always return it is 30 degrees which is a typical weather in singapore and uh, for example for weather we receive some parameters uh, like location and so we have to define a zod schema that will validate the location because chat gpt uh, requests your functions with some arguments but it can hallucinate and arguments won't be correct well it can hallucinate with anything like call functions that do not exist so you have to check everything and uh, be, just be prepared that something it calls does not exist but it is smart enough if you tell it like hey this function does not exist instead of just uh, 
throw in an error, it will try to call the proper one. Okay, uh, so that was schema for validating the uh, arguments of the function. And last one is description of parameters as a JSON schema. So JSON schema is just a special format for the JSON to represent some objects. In this case, it's parameters or arguments of our function. And here we describe location, it is a string, and its description is its location that we want to get weather for. And we also can specify what fields are required to be provided. In this case, it's, well, just location. Okay, so these were three simple functions. They are synchronous, they return response immediately. Next one, draw images from prompt, is a sync function. It actually uses some side uh, API, third party API. It receives prompt, user ID, and the amount of images you want to draw. Like, uh, let me give you an idea. Let me refresh it. So, draw five castles in different, no, not different. I'll just draw five castles. It should draw a castle, but five variation of it. Okay, while well, it's working, let's continue. So this is using open API create image, which is basically a DALI uh, model. It will generate image of 1000 per 1000 width and height and desired amount with desired prompt. That's it, it's very simple. It returns some output, but mostly we need just URLs. Okay, and here I just describe like, hey, it draws images and outputs array of URLs. Each URL contains an access token used only with access token. So last time we didn't see a picture, it's because sometimes ChatGPT just cuts off the access token from URL. And uh, I don't know how to fix it yet. Sometimes it works fine, sometimes it's cut it. Uh, who knows? Okay. Oh, this time it didn't cut it. Actually, this, this castles are nice. Yeah, this is the best pictures it generated for me so far. Well, awesome. Okay. Um, so that was just to show you that it can configure parameters like how many uh, images to generate. Okay, and uh, this is description of the schema of parameters. And we just export these four functions. I think it is possible to do something like uh, Zapier integration or if then this then if this then that services, you know, that can help you integrate even more stuff. Uh, I'm curious if it will work here, but it should, I guess. Okay, this was just definition of functions. I moved them to specific file to make sure they are all grouped together. I guess it's possible to call some functions on the front end and some on the back end, but right now for simplicity, again, we call it all on the back end. So it can, for example, call your database via SQL or MongoDB, or Redis, or something. So just think of what you would like to automate. Okay, cool. So that was functions. We almost finished, I promise. Uh, last step, the create chat completion function itself. It takes our messages, our functions, and it calls OpenAI create chat completion with messages and functions. Here I remove everything from messages that is not related to OpenAI itself because I have some IDs, if, if it is flagged or some other stuff that I want to track, like how much time each uh, feature took. So OpenAI doesn't like it, so we need to clean it up. And I use Zod again with a more strict schema here it is, that only has role, content, and name and function call. The rest is just uh, removed. Okay, so 
This is a tricky part here. It can return response with a message and this message can be either a function call and we check it here. Either it will has content, which is basically an answer. And we, if it is just the content, we, we wrap it up here. We return as it is. Cool, uh, but complicated part is with function call. Because it can be recursive, it can call functions again and again until its desire is solved or how to say, until it's satisfied with, with amount of things it knows about the context. So here I use wrapper for our functions called call function. It figures out which one it wants to uh, call. It validates the arguments and does a lot of this nasty stuff uh, to prevent hallucination to get into our arguments. Okay, awesome. We calculate how much time it took and we finally add it to array of messages together with previous messages and here we can see original request of assistant what function it want to call and uh, response of the function and we send it back to OpenAI like hey you wanted this we got this answer from the function do whatever you want with that and then it either returns you an answer with content or it returns you another function call so that's why here we do it in a recursive format. That's it. That's it. I promised. Um, cool. So what I plan to do next is to show you how to deploy it to AWS via SST. Uh, but if you don't need it, just think about what you can integrate with ChatGPT now. I recommend to read deeper about the function calling formatting. It's quite interesting in itself. Uh, and try to do something with it. It's quite exciting. Okay, uh, let's proceed with deploy. So once I finished this functionality, I was trying to deploy it and my first call was Vercel. But I'm cheap and Vercel has request timeout of 10 seconds for uh, for free, where it is, serverless function execution timeout, 10 seconds for hobby plans. And for pro plan, you have to pay like 20 bucks per month. And I didn't want to do it just for that. So I was like, okay, I wanted to try SST for a long time. It's time. So let's close this. What is SST in first place? It's basically a TypeScript way uh, to configure stack. Uh, stack, I mean, what you need to uh, not need for your project, like what database, S3 bucket, queues, workers, etc. Uh, and uh, it's all in TypeScript. So let me find it. SST config TS. So here my application is simple. It doesn't rely on a database yet. So I only has this Swell kit site and that's it. If I would need uh, a database, I would just, just uh, specify database here. Uh, let me show you how they do that. So if we click get started, and here on the left, let me make this bigger probably, you can select a framework that they support out of the box, uh, like you just add it to your project, it automatically detects what framework you use, but if it doesn't detect, you'll just need to write your static site, something standalone thing, uh, your, your custom config basically. But I'm using SvelteKit, so it's simple. I create Svelte project, I called create SST that installs all dependencies, detects that, oh, hey, it's Svelte kit. Would you like to configure it automatically? I said yes. And then you can uh, start it locally or deploy it. For things like file uploads, you can specify bucket 
and upload using uh, as, as free or you can specify a cron job or a database etc there are many things you can do i haven't checked all of them i plan to learn more and do some more complicated examples of integrating of multiple uh, amazon products together and release another ss3 focused video so stay tuned for that cool so as you can see just a few comments you execute basically it's just create sst and uh, you need amazon s3 account and you need uh, their tokens or whatever it's called wait where it is how to how to configure an ssd is that the one no, there, there was a um, an article on their website probably somewhere here how to initiate your amazon yeah i'll just include it in the description okay now uh, after that is done all you need to do is i added custom timeout default is 10 this is why where cell didn't work uh, but here it works and i will pay just pennies for as free oh, sorry as free amazon i mean comparing to 20 bucks for where cell i also imported environment from uh, .env file with .env package and imported in here and that's all I needed. So now if I want to deploy it, let's let's say, ah yeah, just pnpm ssd deploy, that will build your project locally and uh, run deploy for to Amazon S3. So first time you do it, the build will be quick, like Svelte is usually quick in the build. But deploy first time will be quite long, well, maybe five to 10 minutes. So just take your coffee, rest a little bit. If you got to this stage, you did a good job and I'm really proud of you. Okay, so deploying for second time and third time usually takes take about a minute. So here you can see it reports about progress. There are multiple steps of like the plots, your build artifacts to S3 bucket, it configures your server functions, Lambda functions, it configures uh, load balancer for you, it kills previous version and um, starts a new one, and basically it does a lot for you that otherwise you would do with your own hands, and uh, I'm very new to Amazon. I used Firebase and Google Cloud and Vercel before. Uh, so I just wanted to try if S3 allows me to deploy without knowing much about uh, AWS itself. Okay, so it took one minute, 15 seconds, and it is deployed to this URL. Okay, let me move myself. Yeah, let's see if it works. So first time I deployed, I had problem with environments, but now it is fixed. Hey, yeah, it works. Draw a super cow that fights with Robocop. I know, super cop that, super cow. Ah, I misspell. Okay, that will take it about 10 seconds or so. Um, yeah, I'm quite excited. Sometimes it draws some weird pictures. Uh, let me show you, have, have some, like this was a muscular car, cow that drinks milk and has a red cape. Okay, super cop fighting with Robert. <laughs> Sorry, this is hilarious. Okay, so it works. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, leave comments down below and hope to see you in the new videos. Ciao!